it sounds, if not overwhelming, at least daunting, partly in the scale, partly in the range of challenges that you faced. In thinking for the moment about pedagogy, do you think that you've been able to make some progress since the spring? I really do. I mean, I think, you know, we closed again on a Friday and by Wednesday, we were operating uh, online school. You know, a lot of districts took a few weeks off to kind of get up and running. And we decided to build the plane as we were flying it because we didn't want students to go a few weeks without that instruction. But it really was um, triage. You know, we're, we had students who were just getting up and running and we had teachers who um, may be incredible educators in the classroom, but were having technological challenges themselves. Um, and it was really, you know, and I, I think we would see this across the country, um, scattershot. And we spent the summer not only providing enrichment and remediation, but really uh, working with our teachers union and other partners to have this fall look more like a traditional school day, uh, a schedule, 9 to 215, um, assessments, a homeroom period, um, a mix of what's called synchronous live, like we're talking right now, instruction and asynchronous instruction. But there were challenges, you know, and I'm sure um, Angela can talk to them, talk about them as well at the school level. But, you know, given our demographics and the challenges with, with uh, students' home lives, you know, a few questions that came up were, what do we do about whether kids have to keep their cameras on? Um, it's very hard, and I say this as a former middle schooler, middle school teacher and middle schooler, to check for understanding if kids aren't uh, on video. But when kids are living in um, one bedroom apartments, when they have multiple people at home, we had real equity concerns around forcing every kid to get keep their camera on, especially when internet connectivity was a challenge. So we had um, kind of thorny areas like that where we had to work through, you know, besides um, what are kids learning and how are we you know, training teachers. We did a 40 hour professional development to get uh, teachers trained in what we were calling the future ready certification, but also these issues of, of when the, the school room becomes the, the, the living room, how do we deal with that? And then the last point on this I'll say too, is especially with younger kids, you know, I'll often joke that on March 12th, we were telling kids and families and parents in particular, no screen time, screen time is bad read a book, walk outside. And then on March 13th, we were saying you should be on a screen for eight hours. And one of the biggest tensions we had in the spring was families who wanted more. They wanted a typical school day, eight to two or nine to three um, online. And, and you know there was pushback, not only from teachers unions, but also from, I think, academic experts saying, you know, it's not having kids on a screen for eight straight hours is maybe not best you know, for their social, development. So just, you know, a few of the challenges we're facing.